Today we're going to talk about NAPAS, session NAPAS in general or sessionable NAPAS. Why do I want to brew that and uh, why do I think it's important? Yeah, let's get into that. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and homebrewing. If you want to learn with me how to become better at beer and homebrewing, consider becoming a subscriber. Today we're going to talk about NAPAS, Session NAPAS. I have been experimenting with brewing sessionable NAPAS for my beer kits. Today there are three beer kits out and one of them is a Session NAPA. So I want to talk about different ways I have been experimenting with brewing the, the NAPAs that goes into the kit. And also I do have some uh, brewing footage from this beer which ended up as a kit. And I'm going to talk about the kit in general, some uh, yeah, tips and tricks maybe about NAPAs. Yeah, sounds nice. I have shown this beer before, uh, two weeks ago. It has now been sitting outside in the uh, cold Swedish climate. It's uh, today just below freezing actually, and it's starting to clear up. This is how it looked after like two weeks um, in the firm Silla new upgrade video. You can go and check that out. If you're interested in brewing Napas, I have a playlist with more Napa content and also some like beer and oxygen content, which is really important with a style like this with a lot of hops in it. So, why did I want to make a session Napa for my beer kit and of course for myself? Well, this is a kind of style that really you want to drink as fresh as possible. If I have a beer, like if I buy a beer here at Systembolaget, the only store here in Sweden who sells alcohol over 3.5% ABV, they often like 8.5%, something like that. I don't want to have a full keg of 8.5% beer that needs to be drunk fresh. And uh, yeah, of course, also, I think we home brewers, we do drink more beers than others. so. To be able to uh, brew good, more lower ABV beers is way for the the future. But there has to be a, a balance, of course. And this beer ended up like 4.9% ABV. So maybe it ain't what I would think of like a session beer, even though I think it can count as four under five percent. It could be, but it's still a sessionable. Napa, because it's not like the six, seven, eightish percent. I want a beer that you can finish off quite easily. You can have a lot of, so it can't be strong in ABV because it needs to be drank fresh. And uh, yeah, as you see, it's still hazy. Still looks very, very good. No sign of any oxidized beer. Still smells very nice, but, but it ain't as hoppy as it was three weeks ago. It's still, it's still very hoppy though. Uh, and I also want a beer that can be uh, drunk almost directly. So I don't want like a hop burn. So we have to talk about that also, how to balance these things out. Even though it's not a big beer in ABV, I still don't want it to be like weak. I have some brewing footage of this beer, which I can make into like epic B-roll for this one. And as I said, this beer is already available as a beer kit, but only right now here in Sweden from Brew Goat, which is today's sponsor. So go and check them out and yeah, cheers and thank you to Brew Goat. So I have been experimenting with a high amount of unmalted. I have been using oats and I have been experimenting with different kind of uh, of, of eats and I actually did just for my patrons I did a bulgur beer where I added bulgur instead of wheat and yeah the patrons have the recipe if you're interested in yeah more recipes and uh, I do like more vlog style there on patreon you can go and check that out high amount of uh, unmalted and like I said wheat because I, I like uh, the, the wheat taste and also some oats I know some brewers who brew in this style of beer likes to add a lot of malt to dextrin and that gives you a great amount feel and because that is a sugar that uh, the yeast have a really hard time to consume so you will end up with a beer with a very high FG and 
even though it ain't sweet, it do mean that your beer will have a lot of sugars and calories. And uh, a lot of sugars, of course, ain't good for you. So I didn't want to go that way. Um, so instead, I've been playing with adding like more oats to give it like a silkier mouthfeel. And uh, you see the head there, it goes nowhere. And of course, that is from uh, the high amount of uh, unmalted and of course also hops. Hops wise, I have been experimenting with a few hops and I have said it over and over on this channel. I'm, I'm not a, like a mosaic fanboy. I like to put it this way. Many different hops have like a side note to, to them and mosaic have a side note that um, yeah, it I really don't like it. But if you balance it, you can balance those side notes out. If you're using mosaic, you can get like a burnt tire, spare, spare tire. And uh, if you like do a lot of Amarillo, it might get catty. If you use a lot of Cascade, it might get grassy. If you're using a lot of like Mandarin and Bavaria, something like that, you will get almost like an oxidized flavor, a jam, strawberry sweetness to it. Some could kick off like onion and garlic, something like that. So I, I be, have been experimenting with different kind of hops. I'm usually most find that the, the side note gets more predominant when you're dry hopping. And so by splitting up, this beer has three different hops in it. We have tried to like balance that out. So no, none of these side notes will really stick out. As I said, the, these kind of beers are very sensitive to oxygen. So uh, a tip for you is Especially if you are not doing like seal transfers, like I am from fermentosaurs and from sillas, and uh, what kind of uh, fermenters you are using. And if you are planning to uh, send samples of beer to friends, or if you're bottle fermenting, it is actually to uh, add a little bit of uh, antioxidant. I've tried out ascorbic acid. So you can add some ascorbic acid at the same time you add your yeast. Use 0.1 gram per liter. So like in a 23 liter batch, that would be uh, 2.3 grams. Here's the, uh, the beer. And yeah, you get a classic like Napa flavor. There's something ringing in here. I think it's, it's that. I hope it's not distracting you. It is distracting me. I'm easily distracted. Look at that head. Whew. Uh, yeah, so you get that classic like tropical fruit. <sighs> Citrusy. <sighs> Orange, mango. <sighs> and yeah. And almost like a like a bread bread bready note. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, it's a very balanced beer. And yeah, speaking of the hops, I've also been trying different uh, additions to to the uh, to the boil. No, sorry, for like steeping, because I've been adding all my hops at the the late end. I've been trying different temperatures there, and uh, like doing no chill. And I tried like 75 degrees and left it and even down to like 65 degrees. And yeah, if I wasn't go no chill, I would go like higher, maybe like 85 degrees, something like that. Wait like 30 minutes before shilling. But of course, it depends on how much hops you're adding and uh, yeah, the alpha acid of the hops. Speaking of my beer kit, uh, the thing with my beer kits as I never intended them to be like static beer kits because there ain't such a thing as a perfect beer and I don't want to do like 500 beer kits because I could easily do that if my mind gets crazy. So instead this will be my sessionable Napa every day haze craze. Yeah, the haze craze ain't going nowhere and uh, I will change it. 
from time to time. If I think I have discovered anything that we could like lower this in ABV even further down the line or that balance between the amount of dry hop uh, between the, the hop burn because I really want this to be able to be drunk straight out of the fermenter. If you don't know what hop burn is, hop burn you get when you add a lot of hops like you want to do in this style and yeah. It can give like a burning sensation in your mouth. So you have to really balance that out or wait for the hops to start to die down and the hop burn will go away. But it kind of uh, defeats the purpose with, with this brew because I don't want to wait. But yeah, if you want your hop beer to last longer, you could wait out that hop burn. And if you are maybe in bottle fermenting, you could play with that. But yeah, I have had a lot of bottle fermented napas that have been like brown from oxidization and sweet. So uh, these beers are, are very, very sensitive and I do have a lot of videos on oxidization. I will try to put some links down from what you think about um, oxidized beer, but yeah, do try the like the ascorbic acid. And speaking of links, first link goes to today's sponsor, Brewgoat. Brugut is a uh, Swedish homebrew supplier and they're about to uh, open up their new store here in Stockholm. So check them out. Cool. The yeast I have been experimenting for this kind of beers is the Lalleman New England. It's a dry yeast and the reason for that is that dry yeast ships much better. So I haven't actually been playing with the liquid yeast at all. I have brewed a lot of napas before with different kind of yeast. But yeah, I, I really like this yeast. So I, I think it's a good yeast for my beer kits. See, good lacing, good head. And of course, this beer is now much clearer, but it's still ha hazy. Uh, but it has been sitting outside for four weeks. It's still in the uh, fermenter stores and it's no issue at all leaving it like that. I don't get uh, an off flavor from leaving it on the yeast, so you don't have to be afraid of that. But it has been sitting very, very cold, and uh, we have a floating pickup from the source, so of course the, uh, the beer will clear up. And getting back to like dry hopping for Napas, some people swear about the, the double dry hop, and I have been trying that method and it works great. And I also been trying single dry hop. I always dry hop before the end of fermentation anyway. And the reason for that is that I want the, the beer still be off gassing when I add the hops. And uh, any oxygen introduced will quickly be consumed by the yeast. So that's a good tip in general. Don't wait to like all of the fermentation is done before we dry hop. I'm always dry hopping hot, but I know some people like to dry hop cold, so they say they get bitterness from it, and uh, that's kind of strange because I don't get that. And uh, as I'm um, fermenting under pressure, and I use a lot of pressure, and I ferment mostly higher than everybody else, um, I think this finished at 30 degrees Celsius, and uh, yeah, it's not a bitter beer. Of course, that is a balance with the uh, hops that gone into the, the, uh, the steeping for this beer. But yeah, I don't see a pattern where I get a lot of bitterness from dry hopping. But yeah, some people say they are. So yeah, I don't know. So if you're into beer and home brewing, consider becoming a subscriber, check out my Patreon page, go out check out the beer kit and the new store from Brogoat, and of course, consider becoming a subscriber. Cheers guys and thanks for watching, Dr. Hans out.